Let's talk about a thyroid cancer in this class. This is again a very related topic because just now we talked about how to approach to a patient with thyroid nodule and that thyroid nodule can be a case of thyroid cancer. See that. Thyroid cancers are not as common as other cancers. Other cancers are more common than thyroid cancer. So if I want to take a few of the names here, okay, in case of uh, male, uh, the cancer of the prostate, bronchogenic carcinoma, and colon cancer are quite common, followed by other GI tract cancers. And thyroid cancers uh, falls below the list. But nevertheless, uh, we don't uh, talk like that when our patient comes with thyroid nodule. Remember that thyroid nodule can be a benign nodule or a malignant one. Okay, so this is the point. 75% of the thyroid uh, cancers occur in female. 75% of them occur in female. This is a very significant you know, epidemiological data. And in 90% of the cases, they present as thyroid nodule, but occasionally they present without a thyroid nodule, but with cervical lymphadenopathy or already with a distant metastasis like metastasis in the lung, metastasis in the brain, metastasis in the liver, or even in the bone. Now, among different types of uh, thyroid cancers, you already know the name, papillary carcinoma of thyroid, follicular carcinoma of thyroid, medullary carcinoma of thyroid, anaplastic carcinoma of thyroid, and lymphoma. Usually the follicular carcinoma of thyroid has a predilection for bony metastasis. Okay, remember this. And uh, papillary carcinoma of thyroid usually manifests as cervical lymphadenopathy. Now with this, let's move on. All of you, please focus on this uh, picture here. Okay, so this is how patient may present. So look at this. There is a massive, you know, swelling on the right side of the neck and there is a swelling on the inferior part of the neck as well also i can see a bit of swelling on the left side of the neck okay but there are different swelling some swellings are big some are small now how can we explain this type of swelling here it may be you know uh, from the thyroid gland this midline swelling at the left and right swelling maybe because of enlargement of the lymph node enlargement of the lymph node. But I cannot say that, you know, uh, without investigating the patient, I have to go for ultrasound in the, uh, examination, CT scan, then only it will be confirmed where these masses are coming from. And this is a lady, okay, see this, look at this swelling, the diffuse type of swelling and the anterior part of the neck. She's, she looks quite old. So this may be uh, another case of malignancy here. Now please mute yourself. Now, let's move on. Let's talk something more about uh, thyroid cancers. Carcinomas are derived from thyroid epithelial cells. Okay? They are derived from thyroid epithelial cells. They may be papillary or follicular. And they may be differentiated or non or undifferentiated. Now, can you tell me what is a differentiated tumor and what is undifferentiated tumor? Anybody? Yes. The, uh, the differentiated means uh, less aggressive, while the uh, undifferentiated means it's uh, aggressive type. Fine, fine. I agree with your, you know, concept there. Anybody else? I want to give one more, you know, chance. Sir, the differentiated have regular areas, uh, surface area, and the undifferentiated have irregular surface area. Okay. They spread. Okay. Mm -hmm. so undifferentiated can metastasize, but differentiated are easily and uh, uh, low stage. Okay. Now see that the concept is there. Actually, the concept is there, but uh, let me you know uh, give a good explanation here. Differentiated malignancy means okay. When we do histopathological exam, they almost looks like the normal cell. They are called differentiated cells. Whereas undifferentiated or poorly differentiated cells means 
they look completely different. They look completely different. The nuclear size is very big. Okay, they look bigger type of cells. So all these things. So in one sentence, undifferentiated or poorly differentiated cells are the hallmark of malignancy and differentiated cells are maybe seen in the earlier cases of malignancy, but usually they are a feature of benign tumor. Undifferentiated, also known as anaplastic tumor. So of course they have high chance of metastasis, okay? And they have high chance of local invasion as well. Whereas medullary carcinoma occur about 5% of all thyroid cancer arise from the calcitonin producing C cell Okay, C cells. These are the calcitonin producing C cell or parafollicular cells of the thyroid gland from where medullary carcinoma arise. The pathogenesis of thyroid epithelial carcinoma is not properly understood except for occasional familial papillary carcinoma and those cases which are related to previous head and neck irradiation or ingestion of radioactive iodine. But the ingestion of radioactive iodine, okay, uh, is considered relatively safe these days. And this is no more considered as a risk factor for malignancy. Whereas previous head and neck radiation may be considered as one of the significant factors. And another one is a MEN syndrome because different type of malignancy may run in the family. These tumors are minimally active hormonally and are extremely rarely associated with hyperthyroidism. Over 90%, however, secret thyroglobulin, which can therefore act as a tumor marker. Now, let me underline these important points for you. First of all, every student should know the meaning of tumor marker. A tumor marker are the substances which are released by the tumor and we can utilize them for the diagnosis. That is the first thing. We can also utilize them when we start treating the patient because if our treatment is working, the tumor marker level should decrease and ultimately disappear. And third point, if they reappear again during the follow-up of the patient, that means the tumor has recurred again. These are the points regarding tumor marker. Okay, different tumor has a different tumor marker. So there may be some hormones, there may be certain enzyme there may be certain proteins which are secreted by the tumor. In this case, I'm talking about thyroid cancer now, over 90% of them secret thyroglobulin. This is a type of protein there, okay? So this can be utilized as a tumor marker. Whereas they do not usually secret thyroid hormone, okay? They do not secret the thyroid hormone. So what does that mean? When we do, radio uptake iodine test okay remember radio optic iodine test uh, is iodine one two three test so when we do this what happens if those uh, you know nodules are not hormonally active what they do with that radioactive iodine yes who can answer this do they actively uptake that radioactive iodine or not if they are not hormonally no, active. Sir. No, sir, they will not take it. No, sir. They will not, sir. Exactly. They will no. not take, okay? They will not take. That's why they are known as cold nodules. They are known as cold nodules. And if some nodules actively uptake the radioactive iodine, we call them hot nodules. These are some, uh, you know, important concept in case of thyroid investigation. Let's move on. Now, see there, all of you please uh, focus on this slide. This is a very important one. So what are the types of thyroid cancer we have? See this, papillary carcinoma of thyroid, follicular carcinoma of thyroid, anaplastic carcinoma of thyroid, lymphoma, and medullary cell carcinoma. Okay, so these are the different types. Among them, the most common one is papillary carcinoma of thyroid, almost comprises of 70% of the overall thyroid cancer. It occurs in relatively young people, of course, more common in female. And regarding the spread, they usually have local spread, means they affect the lymph node, which are present in the neck. 
the cervical lymphadenopathy is very common in papillary carcinoma of thyroid. And sometimes they may even have a distant metastasis like lung or the bone. Prognosis is usually good. Follicular carcinoma is second on the list. It is again more common in female and it has early metastasis to the lung and the bone. This is an important question which may be asked to you. Bony metastasis is quite common in follicular carcinoma of thyroid. And it is also having good prognosis if resectable. Means if you diagnose early, you know, uh, so these are um, uh, easily easy to uh, treat. Now, anaplastic occurs in less than 5% of the case. And these are quite an aggressive type of tumor. They are locally invasive. Remember the term anaplastic. These are poorly differentiated cell. So this is probably the most malignant type of tumor we have, okay, anaplastic. And it has got a very poor prognosis. Lymphoma, just 2%. And sometimes it is responsive to radiotherapy. Sometimes if it is very late, probably not. And medullary carcinoma of thyroid is just 5% frequency. It is often familial. It is a part of MEN syndrome. You already know that. It can have a local or distant metastasis and prognosis is usually poor in comparison to other type. Let's move on. Let's talk about some other features of thyroid cancer. Now, papillary carcinoma of thyroid okay, is the most common type. There's no doubt. Almost 70 to 80 percent cases of thyroid cancers comprises of papillary carcinoma. Ladies or female are more commonly affected than the male, almost three times more. 30 to 40 years of age is the common age group. And many of them have a particular risk factor that is history of radiation exposure as a child in the head and neck area. So we need to take a very good history. Sometime Hashimoto's thyroiditis may convert into papillary carcinoma of thyroid, but that is quite rare, okay? Uh, even if you don't say that, uh, your teacher won't mind. These are slow growing tumor, though they are malignant tumor, they're slow growing. They are TSH sensitive. They take off iodine and TSH stimulation produces thyroglobulin response. Now, these are the important, you know, characteristics feature of papillary carcinoma of thyroid. So see this, this is TSH sensitive. So what does that mean? If we give thyroxine hormone from outside, listen properly, if we give thyroxine hormone from outside, that thyroxine hormone will give negative feedback to the TSH. So TSH is suppressed and the tumor may shrink in size because of this. This is an important point here. They take up iodine, okay? They take up iodine. If we give, uh, you know, iodine uh, to the patient, for example, radioactive iodine, this tumor is actively uptaking any form of iodine actually. And if TSH is given, then thyroglobulin will be produced. That's why it is act like a tumor marker here. Some patients may present with cervical lymphadenopathy and no apparent thyroid enlargement. That's why I said in the beginning of this lecture, sometimes they simply present with big lymph node in the neck, but there is no apparent swelling in the thyroid gland. And because of this, you know, diagnosis may be a bit delayed sometimes. Let's move on. Now, another important point is from pathology here regarding the papillary carcinoma of thyroid. They are unencapsulated, means they do not have capsule. They are well differentiated usually, and they do not have, you know, a mitosis, a rare mitosis. Okay, mitosis is a feature of malignant tumor, means a more mitosis are present in anaplastic type of tumor. 50% of these papillary carcinoma have got samoma body. So let me, you know, underline this for you. This is a very important point. Samoma body. Now, what is the samoma body? These are the calcific concretion or deposition of calcium, okay, circularly. So around the main tumor mass or the tumor shells, the calcium is, uh, you know, deposited layer by layer, just like an onion peel appearance. So this is known as samoma body. 
this P is silent here, Samoma bodies. And there are certain other conditions where Samoma bodies is seen. Now, anybody can tell me where are those, which are those tumors where Samoma bodies are seen? Anyone? This may be a difficult question. So let me answer this. One is meningioma. Okay, meningioma and serous adenocarcinoma of ovary. Okay, serous, serous, okay, cyst adenocarcinoma or adenocarcinoma of ovary. So these are the two other important, you know, tumor where samoma bodies is very commonly found. Sometimes these tumors are multicentric with tumor present in contralateral lobe as well. Multicentric means they are, uh, you know, originated from different areas. Now, the second tumor or cancer on our list is a follicular carcinoma of thyroid. Now, this is, uh, this falls a uh, second in the ranking of the thyroid cancer. It is common in iodine deficient areas. This is a very important point. So we need to take a good history. Probably they have a, a long-term thigh, you know, goiter there, and that goiter may simply, you know, uh, develop or convert into follicular carcinoma. Three times more common in female again, and it is present in more advanced stages than papillary carcinoma of thyroid because it metastasizes quite early, and metastasis is one of the very important feature of, you know, malignancy. The S group is late 40 and some important characteristic features are, see there, it is also TSH sensitive. It takes up iodine, just like papillary carcinoma of thyroid and it produces thyroglobulin. So these are common features, you know, like papillary carcinoma of thyroid. Now, one important point I like to highlight here. If there is already metastasis occurred in follicular carcinoma, how I diagnose that metastasis? Anybody? How I diagnose that metastasis? Yes? Sir, uh, we can give the uh, radioactive substance and we can see the metastasis. Good. That is one answer. Any other way to, to detect metastasis apart from this? Any other way? How you know if there is metastasis to the bone? How you know that? By taking sir, bone marrow, sir, we can see CBC, we can, and we, if there is pancytopenia, there is bone suppression. Exactly. CBC. Okay. Exactly. Now, very good. So see that. So this type of questions will be asked to the student just to know whether your concept is there or not. Okay. The answer is not difficult here. Just use your mind during that time. Now, one of the important point I already explained this here. This follicular carcinoma of thyroid, they actively uptake the iodine. So if we give radioactive iodine in this case, you know, they uptake that iodine and, you know, these radioactive substances can be easily visible with the help of X-ray or with the help of scintigraphy, we say, as a special type of X-ray. That is one, one answer. Another one, if it is uh, metastasized to the bone or any other uh, organ uh, for that, we can do CT scan, we can do X-ray, we can do ultrasound to see whether that structure is damaged or not. And we can correlate with the primary disease. And in the uh, you know very advanced uh, cases of malignancy, even the bone marrow may be affected. Absolutely correct. So pancytopenia may be there. Okay. So this is how uh, you 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 know uh, answer this type of questions. Sir, how they met metastasize to bone? So that that is their property, you know. They go to blood and then to then go to the bone. So how uh, malignancy metastasize? You already know that there are three ways. One is lymphatic metastasis. Hemat another is hematogenous, and third is what is the third way? I'm I'm contact asking. Contact tissue. I'm Invis asking. Origin of contact tissue. Okay, I'm asking about the general question here, not, not related to the thyroid gland, okay? If a teacher asks this type of general question, you should know how to answer. For example, if it is an abdominal malignancy, it may uh, metastasize through the body cavity. Transcelomic spread, it is called. So lymphatic is one, hematogenous is second, 
and transshilomic you know metastasis is the third now uh, somebody is uh, saying the local spread that local spread is called local invasion it is not called metastasis this is a feature of invasion i'm talking about metastasis right now now let's talk something more about follicular carcinoma how they look okay when we examine them they are rounded type of malignancy they are rounded they are encapsulated means they have the capsule okay there may be cyst present inside them there may be different fibrosis and hemorrhagic reaction there and microscopically they are neoplastic follicular cells and one important point that's why uh, they cannot be differentiated whether benign or malignant by only fnac so fnac is not reliable in the diagnosis of follicular carcinoma of thyroid they are differentiated from follicular adenoma by the presence of capsule invasion and vascular invasion now see this adenoma is a benign tumor okay we are talking about carcinoma now which is a malignant tumor so there is a property of local invasion by invading the capsule as well as blood vessel so definitely this is a feature of malignancy local invasion is similar to papillary cancer of the thyroid cervical metastasis are uncommon and distant metastasis is significantly higher so remember this important point here with lung and bone most common site so if metastasis occur to the lung you know the patient may be having breathlessness cough hemoptysis all those things and when we take the x ray the x ray looks like cannon ball appearance this is a very important term which is used in clinical practice cannon ball appearance is the metastasis to the lung because of secondary malignancy okay and bone we already talked about now the third important cancer on our list is anaplastic carcinoma anaplastic carcinoma and lymphoma is you know discussed along with it because sometimes they look a bit similar and sometimes it is difficult for for us to distinguish between them patients are usually elderly women in whom there is a rapid thyroid enlargement over 2 to 3 months this is the most malignant okay tumor of the thyroid gland so they they enlarge very rapidly and these ladies are quite old the goiter which is there is hard and symmetrical it is hard type of goiter because of the malignant mass and because of the big size of the tumor usually there is local you know uh, symptoms like strider due to tracheal compression and hoarseness of the voice due to recurrent laryngeal nerve palsy okay by this time every student know this there is no effective treatment for anaplastic carcinoma because this is the most malignant one and uh, probably it has already metastasized and having local invasion everywhere so we go for palliative therapy palliative not curative curative therapy may be damaging for that old patient the quality of life will severely hampered if we still go for the curative treatment but palliative treatment is done to improve the quality of life but we don't you know uh, our objective is not the cure of the malignancy there so what does that mean if there is local compression effect then we go for radiotherapy which gives temporary relief of the mediastinal compression and patient feel easier for certain duration the prognosis for lymphoma on the other hand okay which may arise from the pre existing hashimoto's thyroiditis is much better in comparison to anaplastic carcinoma lymphoma are usually radio sensitive tumor they can be uh, you know nicely treated by radiotherapy let's move on now another type of thyroid cancer is the medullary carcinoma this is the fourth in our list medullary carcinoma so this tumor arises from the para follicular c cells of the thyroid very important mcq question please remember this don't forget 
if you if you do the mistake in this simple question you know this is a silly mistake in the exam now what is the tumor marker of uh, medullary carcinoma of thyroid what is the tumor marker yes increase calcitonin calcitonin exactly calcitonin is considered as the tumor marker of medullary carcinoma of thyroid because they produce calcitonin because they are developed from para follicular or c cells of the thyroid gland apart from calcitonin the tumor may secrete 5 hydroxy tryptamin also known as serotonin and prostaglandins also okay so these are some other secretion from there patient usually present in the middle age with a form thyroid mass because this is a type of malignancy so of course it is formed to hard and cervical lymphadenopathy is common but distant metastasis are rare okay. in the beginning but uh, any type of malignancy you know there would be distant metastasis in the terminal cases now one important point though serum calcitonin level is raised okay hypocalcemia is not common now what is the function of calcitonin here we all know what is calcitonin doing there yes what is the effect of calcitonin hypo it will deposit the cal calcium into a bone so it will, bone. So it will bone. cause a hy hypocalcemia exactly hypocalcemia exactly it will cause hypocalcemia because it takes calcium and deposit that calcium in the bone but it is very you know interesting uh, finding here though calcitonin level is high the hypocalcemia is not a common feature in this case okay so probably some related uh, conditions occur here some related conditions occur here and if your teacher asks what may be the reason you know we can again correlate this with men syndrome again correlate this with men syndrome now what is the relation a part of men syndrome is parathyroid hyperplasia means there is increased pth hormone and pth hormone a function is exactly opposite that of calcitonin so probably it is balancing the level of calcium there okay so this type of uh, explanation you can give it shows that your concept is quite clear there so don't hesitate to answer like this let's move on regarding the treatment of medullary carcinoma of thyroid the treatment is by total thyroidectomy because this is a malignant mass or tumor so we remove the whole thyroid gland with removal of affected cervical node also yeah, definitely we have to do that since the c cell do not concentrate iodine there is no role of iodine 131 therapy because there are different type of cells they are not like you know thyroid follicular cells only thyroid follicular cells they uptake iodine not the para follicular cells so we do not use 131 iodine therapy in medullary carcinoma of thyroid this can be asked as an important question in the viva exam for the student prognosis is variable here so it is a bit of you know having poor prognosis than other thyroid cancer apart from anaplastic carcinoma now let me revise this men syndrome though we have already done it before so please pay attention right here in the class you should make a concept of it because it it can be asked as a, a different clinical problem solving questions later on now see this medullary carcinoma of thyroid may occur sporadically or in families as part of multiple endocrine neoplasia type 2 syndrome me and 2 because me and 2 are again divided into 2a and 2b and in both you know medullary carcinoma of thyroid is important feature sporadic means uh, here and there okay, sometimes we we do not uh, know from where the malignancy come there this may be because of mutation and some other time 
it may be a familial type of inheritance. Now, all types of MEN2 include pheochromocytoma and medullary carcinoma of thyroid. Now, remember, MEN2A has one more feature along with them, that is parathyroid hyperplasia, whereas MEN2B is having mucosal or mucocutaneous neuroma and marfanoid feature, and sometimes they also have some muscular hypotonia. But the common features are pheochromocytoma and medullary carcinoma of thyroid. Okay, so let's move on. Now see this? This is a overall a picture of MEN or multiple endocrine neoplasia syndrome. Very easy for you to remember. MEN1, we have got 3P pituitary adenoma, parathyroid hyperplasia, and pancreatic tumor. One of the important pancreatic tumor is gastrinoma. Gastrinoma, and that gastrinoma produces gastrin, which is that syndrome we name if over secretion of gastrin occur. What we call that syndrome? Jolinger 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 Ellison syndrome. Excellent. Jolinger Ellison syndrome. Very good. So that Jolinger Ellison syndrome may be a part of MEN syndrome. That type of question can be asked to you. Just correlation is necessary there. And medical student should be able to do that. Now, MEN2, we have two parts, 2A and 2B. So see that these are the components of 2A, parathyroid hyperplasia, medullary carcinoma of thyroid, and pheochromocytoma. Whereas 2B has some additional feature along with these two malignancy. We have mucosal neuroma, marfanoid body habitus, and sometimes even muscular hypotonia. Now, we have come towards the you know, end of this important but a short topic. So what are the treatment of other thyroid malignancy apart from medullary carcinoma of thyroid? That we have already talked. But what about papillary carcinoma? What about follicular? What about anaplastic? What are we going to do? Now, please pay attention. This is usually done by total thyroidectomy because this is a case of malignancy. You don't take any chance there. Don't uh, you know keep a bit of thyroid tissue behind. Who knows? Later on, the same leftover mass may develop into a big tumor. So total thyroidectomy is done, followed by a large dose of iodine one three one treatment in order to destroy any remaining thyroid tissue, whether it is normal tissue or malignant tissue. So we destroy everything there or we remove it, okay? Thereafter, it should be followed by a long-term treatment with thyroxine. This is levothyroxine in a dose sufficient to suppress TSH. Usually 150 to 200 microgram per daily. This is a large dose of thyroxine. When you start uh, you're doing clinical practice, you'll realize this. Usually a case of hypothyroidism, you know, we give 50 to 75 microgram every day. It is almost double than that. So this dose will give negative feedback to the TSH and TSH is suppressed. Remember, if TSH is not suppressed, the tumor may keep on growing there or whatever malignant cells are left behind, you know, they keep on growing because this tumor or these tumors, I should say, are TSH sensitive. That's why this is a very important type of therapy. Now, what are the other type of treatment? What is the follow-up? What we do? Okay. The follow-up is by measurement of serum thyroglobulin. This thyroglobulin is a tumor marker there. So we, we go for the measurement of thyroglobulin, which should be undetectable in patient whose normal thyroid has been destroyed and who are taking a suppressive dose of thyroxine. If patient is doing well, thyroglobulin should not be detectable there. But if we have detected a good level of thyroglobulin that suggests tumor recurrence or metastasis, this is a very important point. That's what I told you. What is the role or use of tumor marker? 
this is one of them. If tumor recur back, or if there is metastasis, and those cells are again producing the same substance, we can detect them. And this is used as you know a, a feature of recurrence, which may be detected by whole body scanning with iodine 131, and may respond to the further radio iodine therapy. So this is how we follow up the case. Okay, now at the end, I have, uh, you know, comprises few of the cases for you. We have got few minutes. Okay, so let me do this. And if I cannot finish, I'll provide this in your homework also. Now see here, this is the case study one. All of you please focus here. Here, a 50 year old housewife complains of progressive weight gain of 20 pounds in one year, fatigue, postural dizziness, loss of memory, slow speech, deepening of her voice, dry skin, constipation, and cold intolerance. Every student can diagnose by looking at this clinical feature. What is the diagnosis? Quickly. What is the diagnosis? Primary hypothyroidism. Okay. This is hypothyroidism, but you don't, you don't know whether primary or secondary, right? Yes, because uh, this is a hypothyroidism, but you can answer primary hypothyroidism are much more common than secondary. That's why I take the name of primary hypothyroidism. You can say like that. Or you can also say there are no features given of raised intracranial pressure there or those type of symptoms. So probably this is a case of primary hypothyroidism. But at this stage, uh, don't pinpoint which type, you know. During the physical examination, vital signs, the temperature is 96.8 degree, pulse just 58, see there, and regular, blood pressure 110 over 60. She is moderately obese and speaks slowly and has a puffy face with pale, cool, dry, and thick skin. The thyroid gland is not palpable and the deep tendon reflex time is delayed. So there are so many important sign of hypothyroidism again. Bradycardia is a feature of hypothyroidism. The temperature is slowly on the lower side. That is another feature, okay? Then there is a dry and thick skin. This is a feature of mixed edema. Puffy face is a feature of hypothyroidism. She's relatively obese. That is another feature. And the tendon reflex time is delayed, especially the delayed relaxation. So all these are pointing towards a case of mixed edema or hypothyroidism. So I was talking about uh, a case, okay? And according to the history and physical examination, uh, this is a clear cut case of hypothyroidism hypothyroidism. Now, we need to go for investigation and that investigation will clearly tell you whether it is primary hypothyroidism or the central hypothyroidism. Now, see here. Regarding the lab study, CBC and differential count are normal. The serum T4 concentration is 3.8 okay, microgram per DL. So 3.8, this is the normal value which is provided in the bracket there. 4.5 to 12.5 is the normal. So it is lower, okay, than the normal value. So this is a case of hypothyroidism, clear cut case. The serum TSH is one, okay, micro unit per ml. Now see, this is the normal range here, 0 0.2 to 3.5. So it is still within the normal range according to this, but towards the lower side, towards the lower side and the serum cholesterol is higher, 255 milligram per deciliter. Usually in hypothyroidism, the cholesterol is high. We already know that. So which type of hypothyroidism is this according to you? Which type? Is it primary or the central? It's primary. I'm looking primary, sir. Because Why? there is no such cause, sir. Why is it primary? What happens uh, regarding the uh, TSH? Because, sir, because uh, there is no other uh, NLA. TSH is uh, high, sir, in this case, sir. And T4 is low. So why TSH is high? TSH is not high. Look at here again. TSH is 1. Sir. See this? See, look it's, at the range. Sir, it's not. TSH is not. 
okay but t4 is low sir yeah t4 is low but tshs is within normal limit it is slightly on the lower side though okay it is slightly on the lower side so uh this is not a case of primary hypothyroidism because listen properly in primary hypothyroidism yes the disease is in the thyroid gland but because of the very low t4 secretion it cannot give negative feedback properly to the pituitary so tss should be more than normal it should be more than 3.5 it doesn't look like that in this case so this is not a case of primary hypothyroidism so can it be secondary hypothyroidism and the answer is yes though other clues are not provided the ct scan was not done there the visual pathway was not checked but you know most of the time they don't give you they just want you to interpret this thyroid function test see this tss is still within normal range but it is on the lower side probably because of this low tsh okay lower range tsh i should say the t4 secretion is lesser from the gland this is a bit of difficult case i can understand because if tsh is very low the case is clear cut for you but sometimes they may give this type of case just to you know uh, judge how much you know here see this so this is a probably second hypothyroidism or central hypothyroidism and uh, these are the common causes for that if your teacher asks you can answer like this pituitary tumor pituitary infarction sarcoidosis which is which has damaged the pituitary gland or even hypothalamus hemochromatosis this is iron overload condition and we all know in iron overload condition there is damage of the endocrine gland metastatic carcinoma and cranio pharyngeoma which is a tumor right there carotid artery aneurysm compressing the pituitary gland and hypothalamic tumor like germinoma meningioma or even hamartoma okay so extensive uh, causes are written there but if this question is you can always take two to three causes let's talk about another case Now, all of you please uh, you know focus here this type of questions are very commonly asked in your exam that's why i have included it here Now, directly lab studies are given here cbc and differential counts are normal the serum t4 concentration is 3.8 okay microgram per dl and this is a normal 4.5 to 12.5 so it is low okay it is low here the serum tss is very high look at how high it is 23 the normal range is 0.2 to 3.5 and the serum cholesterol is 255 now every student can pick so it is already written here every student can diagnose this is a case of primary hypothyroidism why primary because t4 is low and tss is very high very clear cut case and what are the most likely causes now autoimmune thyroid disease like hashimoto's thyroiditis radioactive iodine therapy for hyperthyroidism which has destroyed the gland now the gland turned into hypothyroid gland thyroidectomy and external beam radiotherapy which is again damaging the gland so this is a clear cut case let's move on there is one more case for you see there all of you please focus here okay this case is also important and will give you a lot of concept this case is about 32 year old old lady this is the age was referred with typical symptoms which include included tiredness shaking palpitation itching redness of the eye ophthalmopathy and exophthalmos now you already know what type of uh, you know clinical condition is this we are talking about thyroid gland disorder so which Grave. hyper hyper hyperthyroidism very good Grave hyper hyperthyroidism most probably graves disease excellent this is the good way to answer this is a case of thyrotoxicosis most probably caused by graves disease because of this exophthalmos and thyroid ophthalmopathy probably this is a case of graves disease nice she had lost 
19 kg over the three months. This is well matched with hyperthyroidism. The general practitioner had commenced carbimazole. This is the antithyroid drug, but she did not know the dose. She, she could not answer us what dose she was taking. Two months prior to the referral, some tests were done and the results show free T4, F means free T4, 73.6. So look at the normal range here and how high it is, extremely high. TSH is very low. See this very low TSH and she has TPO antibody and it is more than 1300. This is the normal value. Now, why TPO is present in Graves' disease? Yes, why? Who can answer this? Sir, because uh, we learned sir, sir, before sir, that both there, sir, both sir, 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 we learned before that there must be, but it will be other and less are also present. Very good answer. Because both type of blocking or stimulating antibody may be present in this autoimmune thyroid disorder. I clearly told you in the beginning of thyroid lecture. Okay, never forget this. There is no role of this TPO antibodies in Graves' disease, but it helps us regarding the diagnosis because Graves' disease is a type of autoimmune thyroid disorder. TPO antibody play a big role in Hashimoto's thyroiditis though. This lady declined referral to the ophthalmologist as her eyes were not much of a concern for her. She did not, she did not want to go to the, any ophthalmologist for this, you know, problem. She failed to attend her next two appointment. So was discharged back to her general practitioner. Later on, she was again re-referred to the endocrine department. Because of some additional problem, she was again re-referred. Let's move on. See this? This is a good, good type of case and it will clearly provide you a lot of important information. She failed to attend this appointment also due to family problem. She had stopped taking carbimazole due to mouth ulcers and boils. Now just correlate. Carbimazole causes pancytopenia because of bone marrow suppression. And that, you know, neutropenia has led to mouth ulcer and boils in different parts of the body. So this is how we correlate the things here. So she had stopped taking carmazole because of this problem. Clinically, she was extremely hyperthyroid with a moderate to large size goiter and worsening of her eye condition. She had bilateral exophthalmus, reduced vision already in the left eye. She has pain in the eye. She develops grittiness in the eye. She has lid lag and lid retraction, but she thought this was normal for her. It was just a thinking though, she's clearly having features of Graves' disease. Carbimazole and beta blocker were restarted and she was referred to the ophthalmology department. She did not attend her next endocrine appointment and postponed her following two appointments as well. Okay, so a difficult type of patient, isn't it? Not responding properly uh, to the you know doctor's advice. At a later date, she attended the clinic. Probably she had time now. At this point, her medication was increased because the doctor was not satisfied with the control of hyperthyroidism. Thyroid function test requested along with a thyroid ultrasound. She was re-referred to the ophthalmology department and the thyroid surgeon potentially for thyroidectomy. Now my question is, why thyroidectomy is necessary in this case? Why? Because it cannot respond to anti-thyroid drugs. It causes so many problems. Very good. So different answers are coming from the different students. Excellent. Okay. I'm already getting this lady is not compliant to the drug. Very good. One point. The antithyroid drugs are causing problems in her. They are producing some adverse effect. Good point. Second one. And third, probably the most important one. 
these drugs are not helping her you know she is still having a lot of features of hyperthyroidism so because of this different reason surgery is indicated in her and that is okay subtotal thyroidectomy not total okay this is not a case of malignancy we we can go for subtotal thyroidectomy or uh, uh, in the place of that we can also go for radioactive iodine treatment see there so this is the way grapes disease patient present